Ruth chapter number 4, beginning with verse number 13 from the New King James Version of the Bible. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons have born him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also the neighbor woman gave him a name saying, there is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Verse number 16 for emphasis. Then Naomi took the child, laid him on her bosom, and became a nurse to him. May we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for being God and God alone. We ask you right now, Heavenly Father, to forgive us of our sins. It is our prayer that we decrease and that you increase. We ask you, Lord, to send us an applicable word that encourages, encourages us and gives us direction. We ask that you get all the glory, you get all the praise, and you get all the honor. And it is my prayer that your people not hear me but hear you. So I ask you, Father, to hide me behind that old rugged cross and simply seek your power. That preaching power that makes preaching easy. So we ask you to fall afresh right now. Flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast. And it is in Jesus' strong and master's name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. amen, amen, and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. For a few moments, on this Mother's Day 2023, I want to talk to you from the subject, from bitter to better. From bitter to better. And for me, I want us to understand when hard times and disappointment infiltrate our lives, we may find ourselves bitter. But because of God's presence and the very fact that his love is woven into our circumstances, we find ourselves better. 
from bitter to better. I think that we can agree even when we are doing what we are supposed to do. Well. And we are anticipating God's favor to shine on us. Sister Monique, the unforeseen and the unexpected circumstances of life always seem to find us unprepared for its arrival. Yeah. Have you ever been there? The collision of our great expectations and misfortune causes us to be left in a state of brokenness that we truly cannot articulate. And this brokenness, my brothers and my sisters, can lead us to a place of hurt and is unchecked can transform itself into bitterness. Sometimes, in the midst of our bitterness, we feel that God simply did not have to allow us to be hurt the way that we were hurt. But the Bible says, we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Understand, my brothers and my sisters, when we are connected to God, there is better on the other side of bitter. I believe that we can all agree on the fact that our mothers if they are still flourishing or have transitioned from labor to reward are truly a gift from Almighty God. As we celebrate, I want us to remember that no one is perfect. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short of God's glory. So we understand that there is no perfect mother. But, but in spite of not being perfect, you have been perfectly amazing to us and for us. We understand. My brothers and my sisters, we must remember that we only get one natural mother. And because we only get one natural mother, we should take the time to thank God for the mother that birthed us. Yes. Yes. And we also have to give God praise for the bonus mothers God has blessed us all with. As we honor all their legacies on today. Due to the fact that God has blessed us with the precious gift of motherhood. Everyday mothers, you deserve to be loved on. You deserve to be cherished. And you deserve to be celebrated. I personally want to say I am thankful daily for my mother and every woman that has served in the capacity of a bonus mother in my life and you know who you are and I truly believe Reverend Slater that we should not wait till Mother's Day to give our mothers and bonus mothers the love and the honor that they do. We know that being a mother is not easy. Mother right, we understand that motherhood does not come with an instruction manual, manual for all of us number heads. But we understand as 
we observe your work, as we see your many sacrifices, and we continue to see what you do daily, that motherhood should be respected and celebrated because a godly mother is essential to solidifying the foundation, the focus, and the stability of our families. Are y'all with me on today? When we examine things a little closer, mothers, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, are a major contributor to us being rooted and grounded with the ability to move forward in excellence. If it be in the church or in our secular society, our mothers are the ones who equip us, pray for us, and encourage us as we strive to be greater in God. And they are there to pick us up, to dust us off. And they are willing to tend to our wounds. Deacon Simpson, no matter how deep they are. They're there for us when life gets rough and the going gets tough. So we understand that motherhood is a gift from Almighty God. It's a call to serve and protect and it's not always easy. Understand that there are times mothers when we take you for granted, but you continue to love on us, pray for us, and bless us willingly with your service. We understand that every day is not easy, and life, it gets hard sometimes. But you continue to love on us, pray for us, and bless us willingly with your service. Sometimes, mothers, we are troublesome. And we are hard-headed, but you continue to love on us, pray for us, and bless us willingly with your service. There are times, mothers, when we can be ungrateful, but in the midst of our lack of understanding, you continue to pray for us, love on us, and bless us willingly with your service. Sometimes, we don't see eye to eye with our mothers. But you continue to love on us, pray for us, and bless us willingly with your service. The songwriter said, faith of our mothers, living faith, we will be true to thee till death. Let's give God some praise for our mothers. The author of the book of Ruth is never named in the Bible. However, the book, Deacon Smith, is named after its central character. Ruth, a Moabite widow who married a Bethlehemite named Moab. By marrying Boaz, Ruth became the grandmother of King David, which we know also made her an ancestor of Jesus of Nazareth. We understand through our study and reading of this text that it occurs during the time of the judges. And Deacon Harris, we know at this time there was no king in place. But this was written for Israel. And it may have been written as a tool of unification to the 12 tribes which were divided now into two nations. Furthermore, the book of Ruth 
demonstrates how God's people experience his sovereignty, his wisdom, and covenant kindness that often comes disguised in hard circumstances and are restored to harmony through the kindness and love of other folk. The most important concept we can take away from this passage is in spite of all that Naomi endured that caused her to be bitter. It was God's love through others that reassured her that God had not walked away and he had not turned him back on her. And he loves her. Even in the midst of what she thought was bad times. And God's love, the woods, it made her better. Yes, indeed. When we look at the text, in its proper context, we understand that the family of Elimelech which consisted of him, his wife Naomi, and his two sons, Milan and Kilion, moved to Moab. They moved to Moab because there was a famine in the land. Yes, sir. We understand through the pages of Holy Writ, Elimelech eventually passed away. And he leaves Naomi as a single mother with two boys. However, eventually they settle down and they get wives from Moab. And they are married for 10 years. And in those 10 years, my brothers and my sisters, no two children were produced. We don't know how it happened. David uh, actually when it happened. But we know that the two brothers passed away. Now Naomi was a widow. And now she's a mother that's no longer a mother. I want you to understand for the sake of knowledge on today that Elimelech, her late husband, had no immediate living brothers. And a childless widow found herself in a problematic situation. She was in a problematic situation because she didn't have anybody to help her with her long-term financial support. So one day, since she had no financial support, she gathered herself and her two daughters-in-law and they prepared to leave Moab and go back to Bethlehem because see, in Bethlehem she had some community help, which she lacked in Moab. Understand that these three women started out together, but they only felt her daughters-in-law needed to stay in their own land and continue to live their life because she was now older. Or above. As we know, went back. But as we see that God had touched the heart of Ruth. So Ruth stayed with Naomi. And she made this declaration to Naomi. She said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. Where you go, I go. Where you live, I live. 
Your people are my people and your God is my God. When you die, I die. And that is exactly where I'm going to be buried. Tell your neighbor, say, that's love. Tell your other neighbor, that's love. At this point, Naomi, she gives in. And she allows Ruth to accompany her back to Bethlehem. When they get back home, the town is busting. Girl, look who is back. Child in that name on me. Girl, you've been gone a long time. But her response was, don't call me Naomi. Call me bitter. Yes. I'm bitter because, see, I left here full. And God has dealt harshly with me. And it is because of that fact, I am angry. And I'm bitter about it. I want us to understand today that we all experience disappointment. Just like Naomi. We have all experienced hard times that cause us pain. However, I want to encourage you and educate you on today that the only way to overcome pain is to first learn how to bear it. Understand that when we are connected to God, our pain is turned into a tool. Are y'all with me? Our pain is turned into a tool, Ray, for progress. And our trauma, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, is turned into power. Power to press on and power to hold on just a little while longer. Sometimes you gotta remember your burning bush experience. When we look at Naomi's pain, we see from the text that even though she was bitter. Now listen to me. God had a plan to make her better. She's a widow. She's a mother. There's no longer a mother. It's Mother's Day, and she's upset. But God has a plan. To change her tragedy into triumph. See what God did, Deacon Woods. He gave her Ruth. And he gave her Boaz. Are y'all with me? Ruth never left. Naomi sighed. Don't understand one thing about Ruth and Boaz, they were dedicated to God. Dedicated to family and dedicated to doing what was right. But we understand that Ruth never left Naomi sighed. I need some friends like that. We have to remember that Naomi 
was getting up in age. So Ruth, who did not have to be in Bethlehem, she could have been, been in Moab chilling. She was with her mother-in-law and she was willing to go to work on her behalf. And Boaz enables Ruth to provide for her mother-in-law by allowing her to work safely as she gleaned in the field under his watch and under his care. But if you look at the text closely, not only was Boaz providing a job and was working, they was checking each other out. He said, Ooh, who that be? And she saw him around on the field with those muscles. Who that be? <laughs> But they were checking each other out. Then Naomi, even though she was good, she played matchmaker. <laughs> Naomi saw that they were liking each other. And they had mutual interests in each other. And she knew that Moab was a kinsman. And that kinsman could be the redeemer. Yes. Therefore, she took steps to promote the marriage by encouraging Ruth to take the appropriate actions to secure the marriage. Yes. Understand that Boaz became the kinsman redeemer. As the redeemer, Boaz purchases from Naomi everything that belonged to her husband and her sons, including the responsibility for Ruth. As the redeemer, he takes Ruth as his wife, and that keeps the name of the deceased alive along with his inheritance. The memory and the reputation of the deceased is not going to disappear out of his family or from his hometown. Lastly, yeah. God blesses Boaz and Ruth with a son. His name as we know, it's Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David, who later became the king. And we know that Jesus is of the house and the lineage of David. And check this out. Go ahead. Now, Sister Naomi was no longer bitter. And we understand that God showed love to her through Ruth, Boaz, and now Obed. And that love has transformed her bitterness to better. So now, she walks into Hope Missionary Bethlehem Cathedral. <laughs> she got the baby carriage. And Mother Wright turns her head. <laughs> Naomi, I see you, girl. <laughs> Mother Williams said, oh, she ain't bitter no more. Since the Patty said, 
makes you better. You are better because God did not forget you and he blessed you with a redeemer. My brothers and my sisters, God did not forget you because he blessed you with a redeemer. We call him Jesus, Mary baby. So we understand. As parents, that it is the love of God. Many times expressed to others that makes us better. When we endure the unthinkable and the unexpected. Now I see three things. In this text, the expressions of love that shows that love makes one better. Number one, she took the baby. Yeah. When she takes the baby, it means her desire was for a close relationship with the child. Number two, she laid the baby on her bosom. It means she genuinely loved the child. Yes, she did. And the baby, as we know, when babies get close to us, they cause uncontrollable rejoicing. So Naomi was no longer bitter, but she was rejoicing in her heart when the child filled her arms. So she took the baby. She laid the baby on her bosom. And number three, it says she became his nurse. Which lets us know that even though she was once bitter, her desire to love the child and the ability to now care for the child made her better. My brothers and my sisters, even though we may have problems, the ability to love makes us better. There may be situations that we feel like we cannot bear. But the ability to love makes us better. We may deal with folks that are meddlesome and troublesome. But the ability to love makes us better. Sometimes we are hurt, grieving loss and betrayal. But the ability to love makes us better. The songwriter says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table man, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on solid ground. When situations get the best of us, we are going higher because we are better. Sometimes we may feel lost and all alone. We are going higher because we are better. There are times that we feel disconnected and we desire more in this world. But we are going higher because we are better. We may be going through in our hearts. We may be going through in our minds. Sometimes we may be shattered and discouraged. Sometimes we may feel like we have lost our minds. 
Sometimes we may be burdened with a load of care. Folk may walk away from us, never to return, but we are going higher because we are better. We're going higher as servants, higher as a church, higher as ambassadors. Our overall focus, we are going higher. Our praise and our worship, we are going higher. In our obedience, we are going higher. In our relationships, we are going higher. In our fellowship, we are going higher. In the family structure, we are going higher. In our ministries, and as we labor, we are going higher. As we work, and as we press, we are going higher as we grow and as we strive for the greater. We are going higher. The songwriter says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, for the glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey for the no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey my brothers, my sisters. If we're going to be effective, we must trust him. We must obey him. If we're going to be leaders and influence the lost, we must trust him and obey him. When life gets rough and the going gets tough, we must trust him. We must obey him. If we're going to move from bitter to better, we must trust him and obey him. If we're going to live right, if we're going to love right, if we're going to walk right, we must trust him and obey him. See, I'm standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bow to him eternally by love's strong cord overcoming daily with the spirit sword. I'm standing on the promises of Almighty God. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, he's my savior and my friend. And I know that he's with me and he will be with me until, until the end. My brothers and my sisters, we have to stand in the midst of adversity. We have to stand when we find ourselves in a foreign land. We have to stand in the midst of loss, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of being bitter. We will stand even though we become better in the midst of drought. Keep standing in the midst of storm. Keep standing. Get ready for the battle. Keep standing in the midst of equipping one another. Keep standing. When the adversary tries to come against us, keep standing. Jesus is my everlasting portion, more than friend of life to me. All along this pilgrim journey, let me talk with thee. When I'm sick, let me walk with thee. When I'm down and out, let me walk with thee. When I'm up and out, let me walk with thee. When I find myself in Moab, let me walk with thee. If I lose my mother, if I lose my brother, I'm going to keep walking, keep walking. 
walking, keep walking. There are three expressions of love in this text that shows us how love makes us better in the midst of the circumstances that cause us to be better. Number one, she took the baby, which means her desire was for a close relationship with the child. Number two, she laid the baby on her bosom. My brothers and my sisters, she genuinely loved the child. And the baby being close to her caused uncontrollable rejoicing and that rejoicing filled her heart as the child filled her arms. And that's what I mean. The Bible says she became his nurse. This lets us know that even though she was once bitter, her desire to love the child and to be loved by those God sent gave her the ability to simply be better. Tell your neighbor, love makes you better. Tell your other neighbor, love makes you better. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Almighty God. No one is perfect, but love them anyway. No one is right all the time. Love them anyway. Everybody's not going to do what you want them to do. Love them anyway. And love will take you from being dead to being bad. I told you the church wrong. 